family. The understanding of this term has undergone a transformation in recent years, reflecting the realities of life and diversities of family structures in our time. The average family in America has 2.5 children. However, this average family does not exist in the real world. Regardless of our family situation, our love for Christ and our longing to spend our eternity with the Lord bind us together in the congregation. As parents or those who are responsible for raising children, we long that our children experience the love of the Lord and the congregation and that they themselves will grow in loving the Lord and their neighbor. In Deuteronomy 6, God commands parents to teach their children his word and his ways. It says to teach them when we sit down at home and when we walk along the road, when we lie down and when we get up. Everything we do in life should serve as an opportunity to teach our children about God. As they grow to understand who God is, they will come to understand who he has created them to be. Then, as we send our children out into the world, they will have a firm understanding of who they are in Christ and who they are to become and how they can make a difference in this world. The responsibility of raising a child is indeed a daunting task something that might feel overwhelming, especially when we recognize that both their natural and spiritual upbringing is dependent on us as parents. But one of the surest advantages and one of the best defenses that we can give our children is teaching and understanding. Regardless of what stage of life your children are in, your efforts to teach and guide them in matters of faith are always worth the effort. The sixth chapter of Deuteronomy is called the Shema, which is the central prayer in the Jewish prayer book and often the first prayer that is taught to a child. Jesus continues to give importance to it in the New Testament in Mark 12, 29 to 30, when he called it the first of all the commandments and then added to it, love your neighbor as yourself. We cannot overlook the fact that in these verses, God is giving his most important commandments and his guidance for teaching these commandments is that parents talk to their children about them every day. So according to scripture, the role of parents in passing down faith to their children is clear. Parents are meant to be the primary spiritual influencers in the life of their children. A great deal of research about children and teenagers supports the understanding of how influential parents and families are in teaching and forming children. Given the guidance found in scripture, together with current day research, it is important that we are careful to not fall into the trap of developing a drop-off mentality when it comes to our children's spiritual upbringing. Sure, for school, music classes, sports, things like that, children are dropped off and the teacher, musician, or coach does the teaching. But being a Christian is not another thing to learn, it is a way of life. So, if I may be forthright, it is not appropriate to depend on the ministry caring for children or youth to be the primary spiritual influencers. So, I invite you to help develop a constructive relationship between you, as those responsible for raising your children, and the church. You see, if the spiritual influence in your child's life were a meal, your influence would be the main course. The influence of the children's or youth ministry would be the appetizer or the dessert. Your children's or youth ministry only sees your child or teenager a few hours a week at the most. That is no comparison to the amount of time you spend with them. Please understand, the district apostle, apostles, and leaders of the church realize that the programs for children and youth are vitally important to you, your child, and your family, and substantial investments are constantly made to develop and improve these programs. They help teach your child scripture, connect them to one another, and create amazing shared experiences for them. But any healthy church ministry can only serve in a support role to the teaching that happens between parent and child. When together, we discover the best way to establish this constructive relationship, it will positively affect our families. And it will also help to create strength in the congregation, which is the place we expect your children to always find a refuge. 
So what can you do about it? First of all, don't settle for just dropping your child or teen off at church. Second, refuse to be passive about faith at home. Try to establish a routine with your child where you can discuss your faith together. Third, and finally, engage with your children's or youth ministry in your local congregation. Find out what they are teaching and learning. Partner together with your children's or youth minister in the faith development of your child. We encourage you to work together to help your child on their spiritual journey as you pass your faith legacy to your family.